Good morning and happy Sunday to everyone. Welcome, welcome. It's like the party just keeps going from last night into today. How awesome. Welcome to Seal Beach Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Stacy, and we're going to share some songs together as a way we celebrate our sacred time together. And the song is in your bulletin. It's, it's a Karen Drucker tune, and it's called I Start My Day With Love. And it talks about choosing love, choosing joy, choosing peace. And one of my favorite quotes in my 20s was, peace is joy resting, and joy is peace dancing. Isn't that beautiful? Peace is joy resting, and joy is peace dancing. They're two sides of the same coin when you have love. So please stand, and let's all sing together. Choose love, love, love. I choose love, love, love. Love, love, love. I choose love, love, love. I start my day with peace. When I start my day with peace, I feel that sweet release of peace. I start my day with peace When I start my day with peace I feel that sweet release of peace I choose peace, peace, peace I choose peace, peace, peace oh, I choose peace, peace, peace I choose peace, peace, peace Everything I do is infused with joy. I start my day with joy when I start my day with joy. Everything I do is infused with joy. I choose joy, joy, joy. I choose joy, joy, joy. I choose joy, joy, joy. joy to our neighbor and turn to someone and say today is going to be the best day ever. Today is going to be the best day Since it's the first day of the rest of our lives, it may as well be the best day ever, right? <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Seal Beach Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Nicole. I am the spiritual director here, along with my beloved Reverend Michael. And we welcome you to this beautiful spiritual community, this spiritual community that's founded on principles and practices like wholeness and oneness and goodness like meditation and affirmation and prayer, like positive thinking and self-responsibility to transform our lives and make the world a better place. So if that sounds like something that you're into, you're in the right place. If you're new here or, or just passing on by, we would love to talk to you a little bit more. If you want to come and talk to me after service, that's wonderful. Or we have a beautiful little gift bag that you can pick up on your way out. <sighs> we had an amazing event happen last night. We had a vision, we cast that vision, and we fundraised. We created a solid, solid foundation moving forward 
with this community. And I am so honored and so grateful that I got to be a part of that. And we had a ton of fun. Who's tired from all the fun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have an incredible service in store for you this morning. We have the amazing guest musician, Andrea Lane. <laughs> and her beloved. <laughs> we have our house musician, Stacy Robbins. <laughs> our practitioner this morning is the one and only, <laughs> Anne-Marie Lovedahl. And we have a really, really special guest speaker this morning. She's one of my closest, dearest friends, and I'll introduce her a little bit more later. That's a surprise for you all. <laughs> but first, I just want to share some announcements with you all. First of all, Alan. Alan, is he here? Oh. We'll do it at the end. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I want to let you all know that Reverend Michael and I will be getting married September 15th. <laughs> and yay! And you're all invited, but it is a sit-down dinner, so all I need from you is for you to sign up over um, in the back, and it'll be there until July. So you have time to figure out if you're available, but then it's, um, there is enough seating for everybody. We just need to make sure we know who's coming. So please sign up for that if you'd like to join us and celebrate with us. Stacy, would you like to share about your upcoming yes, experience? I would love to. So um, oftentimes you'll hear people say, you want to know what's important to you, look at your checkbook or look at your calendar. Because where you spend your money and where you spend your time is where you, what you value, right? And so um, I also have noticed that when people see your kids, like my kids, Caleb and Seth, and they you know, are not these disgruntled teenagers and they're kind of peaceful and happy most of the time, people come to me and go, what did you do? And so people have been asking that enough times that um, when Donna asked if I would do the Wednesday night service, I invited my whole family to join me so that we can all share about what we value as a family. We certainly haven't done it perfectly, but and during the hard times and the good times, what you value carries you through both, right? And so we thought we are going to all share. The boys are going to share. Rock and I, it's going to be a family chat. And then, you know, when you listen to something like that, you get in touch with what is priority to you, too. So come this Wednesday for our evening service. We'll all be there to share what we value. <laughs> yes. You want to hear more cowbell for bingo, because that means somebody has got a bingo, and we're going to be doing it this Friday night, 6.30 to 8.30. It's going to be a lot of fun in honor of this month of June, of fun, of community. Come on out. We're going to have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. It is going to be a great time. Okay, I wanted to let you all know, um, uh, Judy Heilman's beloved husband, Steve Petty, had passed away a couple weeks ago, and his uh, memorial will be next Saturday at 1 p.m. If everybody is invited, if you felt close to him or connected to him or want to support Judy, it'll be at 1 p.m. next Saturday. Also, I want to let you know, I just want to speak for a moment on something that's been happening and it's been in our face a lot lately in this past week or two. And that's this incredible epidemic of suicide. In America, the suicide rate has gone up by 25% just recently. Mental health, mental well-being, mental illness is all a part of the human experience. It is not something to be ashamed of. It is not something to be tabooed. It's okay to take medicine. In this philosophy, Dr. Ernest Holmes says, take the pill, but know why you're taking it. So what I want to say to you is if you or anyone you know is suffering, is suffering with depression or anxiety or thoughts that it might be better if you weren't here, please come see me. Come see Reverend Michael. I, mental illness goes deep, runs deep in my family, and I can support you, and I can love you, and I can, and I can sit there and hold your hand while you make a doctor's appointment if that's what you need. But please know, please know that it is okay. It's okay to 
talk to someone. And for those of you who know people who are suffering from, from the, this disease or this illness, the greatest thing that we can do is not provide a hotline, is not tell them to go get help, is to be a hand, is to be an arm, is to be a shoulder for them, to call them when we know that they have ups and downs, to call them and check on them, not let them stay in their, in their dark little home suffering, but to be that light for them in the midst of their darkness. And so, in the spirit of that, I want to light a candle, I want to light our memorial candle, and move into our time of spiritual contemplation and practice. And I want to invite us all to recognize this candle as a symbol of that eternal light that is within every one of us, no matter how hard life seems, no matter what the struggles of our minds or our bodies tell us that there is truly only one life and that life is the life of God and it is good and it is health and it is peace and if we are not experiencing that presently there are others in this world who can help us And as I close my eyes and I just recognize and know that we are all so interconnected, that we are all so one, I know that we are our brothers and our sisters' keepers. I know that we have, as biological human beings, we have bodies and brains and they malfunction at times. I know that things happen and I also know that there is a divine truth greater than all of that. And it says that despite, despite the appearances, we believe in a complete emancipation of discord of every nature and that it is sure to be attained by every one of us. Our essence is love. We are God in action. Let us be that action for the world. And so I invite us to remain in this sacred space, in this feeling of the indwelling presence, that presence of love, of God, of good, knowing that it is in every one of us. still in the sangria fog this morning. Okay. So while at the banquet last night, I couldn't help but sort of mentally relive the 60s. The bell bottoms, the flower power, peace, love, the counterculture, and of course, the amazing music. So looking at our talk title today, It's in Every One of Us, I turn to the wisdom of the singers of the 60s like Joni Mitchell and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, who had an answer for what's in us. You might recall the answer which they included in the lyrics to the song Woodstock. Let me help you here. 
Well, I came upon a child of God. He was walking along the road, and I asked him, tell me, where are you going? This he told me. He said, I'm going down to Yasgur's farm, going to join in a rock and roll band, got to get back to the land and set my soul free. We are stardust. We are golden. And we are a billion-year-old carbon. Who knew? Who knew the insights from the 60s, from that song? Forty-some years later, scientists would prove we are stardust. That is what we are made of. Who knew? So modern cosmologists, astrophysicists agree, we're really made up of stardust. Our atoms are ultimately derived from the exploded and scattered atoms and particles of the stars. And I mention this because I find it helpful when I need to gain a much larger perspective of my reality. When I start to become worried or anxious or depressed over those challenges in my life, those problems that I might be facing in work, relationships, health, any circumstances. That's when I call upon my stardust meditation. I start by examining the reality of my being. I'm made up of cosmic stardust, billions of years old. The planet I live on, the food that I eat, the air that I breathe, all owes its existence to that scattering of cosmic dust. And remarkably, here I am, alive, being nourished on a planet called Earth, moving through the vastness of space. And this tiny blue dot of a planet has just the right climate, just the right atmosphere, plants, amazing life, animals, everything to ensure my existence. How awesomely amazing. Scientists now agree that there had to be an intelligence responsible for turning inorganic stardust molecules into organic living material. It's incredibly unlikely that this world would coincidentally happen on its own. So unlikely, in fact, that researcher Fred Hoyle said, supposing the first cell originated by chance is like believing a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from the materials there. I kind of like that image, okay. As I remember that there is an intelligence acting upon all things, I can then trust that this same intelligence can easily orchestrate, demonstrate, and create my desired reality. So I invite you to join me in a moment of meditative release of mentally and fully surrendering and allowing that divine intelligence to step in and create for us the life of our dreams. Please become aware of this present moment, the sound of my voice, the support of your chair, the knowledge that we are surrounded by loving individuals and a power that is limitless in its ability to serve us. And I thank those individuals who serve and who support this spiritual community with their gifts of time, talent, treasure, and it is with gratitude and in joyful anticipation that I release this prayer into the hands of the Supreme Stardust Master, 
please join me in saying, so it is. But a song we sing Fears the way we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the dove is on the wing you may not know why Come on people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try and love one another right now Some may come and some may go we will surely pass When the one who left us here We return to at last We are but a moment sunlight Fading into the grass Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try and love one another right now. Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try and love one another right now. If you hear the song I sing, you will understand. You hold the key to love and fear. It's there in your trembling hand. Just one key unlocks them both. Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try and love one another, right? Let me hear you. Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together. Come 
come on, people now. Smile on your brother, everybody. Let's get together. Try and love one another. Right now. Thank you all so much. Thank you. That was so moving. And it was really nice to hear your voices. <laughs> now I have the absolute honor of introducing our guest speaker this Sunday morning. Her name is Reverend Robin Holt, and she was a ministerial classmate of mine who graduated a bit before me. And Robin is very spunky and enthusiastic like me, but she whoops me and puts me in my place. <laughs> she's, like a, she's like a surrogate mother to me. And um, she has the most vivid imagination. She is from Australia, and she came to America, and she had an amazing, successful secular career in, in, in the corporate world, but she decided that she was going to move back to Australia and create her own Center for Spiritual Living since they didn't have one. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And she's back in the States just for a moment for my graduation, and so I, got, I caught her, and I asked her to please come and share her inspiration with all of us this morning. So I, I, help me welcome Reverend Robin Holt. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know about surrogate mother girlfriend. I think I'm, I'm I think I'm your big sister. <laughs> so that's how I like to think of myself, even though I'm old enough to be her mother. Welcome. Oh my gosh, it is so wonderful to be here. My talk is entitled It's in Every One of Us. Now, what is this? It's in every one of us. We know, don't we? So, this title comes from a song by David Pomerantz, and the title of the song is It's in Every One of Us. And the next line says, To be wise. Yeah. We all have within us an incredible reservoir of spiritual wisdom. But there's a catch. So remember in the is the new Star Wars come out? Anybody seen it? Has it been released yet? I can't remember. But okay, yeah, I'm a great Star Wars fan. Since I had three little boys explain the whole thing to me and which movie goes where and you know one, two, three, four, five, six, and now what are we, seven, which is really zero. Anyway. Um, so you know what is the iconic saying from Star Wars? May the force be with you. Now, we're science and mind practitioners. We don't have to say to people, may the force be with you. We go, the force is with you. Of course. OK, so we know the force is with us. And you can call it God, divine intelligence, spiritual wisdom. It's the it that David Pomerantz was talking about when he named a song, It's in Every One of Us. It's that innate spiritual wisdom. Now, because we're human, we get to operate in our lives on four different planes. The first plane is the physical plane. I call that the factual plane. It just is, right? There's sunshine, green trees, cars, factual plane. Above the physical plane is the emotional plane. And that's where we get to have a feeling about the facts, right? So we say the facts are good, the facts are bad, or I don't care. I don't even pay attention to the facts. OK, so and then above the emotional plane is the mental plane. And it's the mental plane. Well, of course, we're science of mind, right? We really pay attention to the mental plane. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it's so important for us to pay attention to it. Because once you take the facts and the feelings, then there's the mental plane, which is the meaning we give to the feelings and the facts. 
And if we go to the mental plane and we take the facts and we've got negative feelings about them, guess where our thought goes? Negative. So how many people today, just, I know we're science of mind and I know what our philosophy says, but how many of us today have had a negative thought? <laughs> Thank you. I love it. We're so honest. Right. So we know they come. They come and they have an... Okay. So above the mental plane is the spiritual plane. Now, if you take the facts of your life and the feelings and the negative thoughts guess what happens to your access to the spiritual plane? It gets blocked. So here's number one point I want to make today. Where in our lives do we allow the facts of life to block the force of life? Like it? Just remember that. Because very often we let the facts of life block the force of life. And there's a lot of people who don't know what we know. They don't even know there's a force that they can be connected to. And so when they get to that place of mental dis-ease that's so overwhelming to them, they do things that are painful, like commit suicide, etc., like we've witnessed in this past week. So what happens for us to be able to take the facts and watch what happens up the line and know when we are blocked from our spiritual wisdom. So I have a story to share with you. Okay, so six months ago, in fact it was probably three or four years ago, I had this brilliant idea that I was going to move back to Australia and open a centre. Now once it comes out of your mouth, the dean of my school of spiritual leadership, Dr. Kathy Hearn, said, Robin, don't say it if you're not going to do it. I went, hmm, okay. But I kept saying it for three years or three and a half years that I was in ministerial school. So guess what? You know, I was going, already going to move back to Australia. So yeah, I'm going to start a, a Centre for Spiritual Living. Now the fact that as a new minister, nobody told me how to do it. The fact that I am a new minister, so I haven't got a clue how to do it, was irrelevant. So I go back to Australia six months ago with my American husband, who's a practitioner and a wonderful, wonderful person. And I have to face the reality, the facts of starting a new life, setting up a new home, and starting a center for spiritual living, which I've never done before, and I have no clue how to do it. <sighs> Keep breathing. OK, so this is what happened to me over the first four months that I was in Australia. This, oops, hang on. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't matter. You, you get the idea. This was my to-do list. Now, yes, oh my. And so I took the facts of all of that and my, the feeling was complete overwhelm. I became emotionally exhausted. I would lie awake at night thinking of this to-do list. I couldn't sleep properly, right? And we all know what happens to people when we don't sleep properly. So I went to this emotional negative feeling and then where do you think my thinking went? Are you nuts, Robin? You moved halfway around the world, and not only that, you've never done it before, and you're going to think you're going to do it in a foreign country. Because after 25 years of living here in the United States, Australia felt like a foreign country to me. 25 years is a long time to learn how to spell differently and drive on the other side of the road and whatever else I had to readjust to. So around about April, I hit a wall. This to-do list, it was wrapped around me like a mummy. I felt like I was a whirling dervish. I was just whirling around my to-do list and I was completely paralyzed and I just collapsed. I just hit a wall and said, okay, that's it, stop. I'm not gonna do this. This is a dumb idea. I'm out of here. My husband goes, okay, sweetie, whatever. <laughs> my long suffering husband. Anyway, so what I did was I took a step back. I was 
I said, I can't do this. I have to breathe. I can't breathe. My emotions are shattered. I need to take a step back. So I learned something. You know, you never get to do anything without it becoming a talk topic, right? Now you're a minister. That's what happens. All these things that happen to you in your life just become stories that you can tell from the platform. So here's my story. So I learned something from this experience. So I'm in react mode, aren't I? Right? How do you spell react? R E A C T. I had a thought. Take the T from react, turn it on its side, put another line there, and the word react comes reach. So, what did I reach for? Well, the first thing I reached for was peace and quiet. I said, that's it. I'm not doing another thing right now. I just need time to breathe, to experience this beautiful country. I needed time. One of my friends said, Robin, you're here physically, but you haven't even arrived spiritually. You haven't walked on the beach, taken a bushwalk. You haven't heard the kookaburras and you haven't seen any. Have you seen any kangaroos yet, Robin? I went, no. So I hadn't spiritually reconnected back with my country. I hadn't shown my beautiful husband the country that was going to be his new home. So we took a time out. And I got recentered, re energized. I said, okay, there's going to be a way to do this to do list, and it's not going to kill me. It's not going to create all this. I'm going to create some boundaries. I'm going to put some timelines in, all sorts of different ways in which I am going to manage this. Because as somebody from home office in Colorado said, Robin, if it doesn't work for you personally, it's not going to work for anybody else. I went, okay, I understand that. So I reached for some quiet time. Now, I found this very recently because I was getting ready for this talk. And what I always know is when I'm getting ready for a talk, spirit just brings wisdom to me. So now I was calm and relaxed and the gateway from my thinking to my spiritual wisdom was wide open and everything was working again. Thank goodness. So here's what I found on a beautiful website called thedailygood.org. In 2016, Harvard biologist emeritus E.O. Wilson made the claim that the destruction of our inner selves via the wired world is even more serious a phenomenon than the destruction of our natural world. The loss of slowness, of time for reflection and contemplation, of privacy and solitude, of silence, of the ability to sit quietly for 15 minutes without external stimulation has happened quickly and almost invisibly. With, almost without notice, we are losing ourselves. So what part of ourselves are we losing? the connection to spirit, our connection to our wisdom, our connection to what we know is inside of us. And when I read, so I, don't, I still care about the destruction of our planet and our rainforests and our orangutans, and I care deeply about the loss of our oceans, but if we lose ourselves, none of that's gonna matter. Because we'll stop caring. We'll stop caring about ourselves. We'll stop caring about each other. So I have kind of feel like this is kind of like a ministerial mission I've suddenly discovered, which is that this little tool is very, very important to, in our lives. But we have got to learn to de-stimulate from it and everything that it represents. De-stimulate from the tweets, the emails, the phone calls, the whatever else it is that we think is so vitally important to us, we can't even give ourselves half an hour a day of solitude and of quiet. Because it's in that half hour. And what I've come to learn how to do is in that half hour, I ask spirit a question, something I want to know, something I want a download from spirit that is wisdom. That is wise because there's something I need to handle, a fact I'm not responding well to, or something that I need to know. 
So I'm going to give you a very quick, simple example of that. Last week, I was packing to get ready for this trip. Well, it was a week before last now. And I'm, I'm playing around with my costume jewellery, thinking about what I need to take. You know what, we women, my, I wish sometimes when I'm packing I was a guy, because then I wouldn't have to worry about shoes and handbags and, and, and jewellery, what jewellery goes with what. So anyway, I'm looking at my costume jewellery, and I had this thought. I said, where's my good jewellery? And I went, uh-oh, I've hidden it somewhere <laughs> in this apartment. And I have absolutely no idea where. So, of course, that started the frantic search. And I usually hide it under, you know, in an undie drawer or, you know, under something. And so I'm searching through all the drawers. I'm searching in shelves. I'm searching in the kitchen cupboards. I'm like, okay, I think I was innovative this time around. I must have hidden it because it's a brand new uh, apartment. So, you know, my t traditional hidey holes have gone away and now I have to find some new ones. So I'm looking at everything. And then, then of course, my... Poor, wonderfully supportive husband. He comes behind me and looks in the same places a second time. And then I go a third time and look again in the same places. And nothing. Not a thing. And I'm distraught. So I'm going to the emotional plane of being distraught, upset, frustrated. And then, of course, I went... Stop, breathe, go into the quiet. So I did. I thought, you know, one of the things when you're a minister, you have to practice what you talk about. <laughs> so I did. I went into the quiet and I just sat for about half an hour. And this is what I said, spirit, I really need to find my good jewellery. <laughs> Not the least of which is I've just given a copy of the photographs of it all and who I'm bequeathing it to, to my lawyer, to put in my will. And that's not, it's not going to be cool because my nieces are expecting some jewellery <laughs> from me. So I've got to find this stuff. You know, and I know it's only stuff. So, you know, hey. So I asked Spirit to help me find the stuff. About... 45 minutes goes by, and I look over out of the kitchen. Oh, uh-oh. Gosh. So I look over into the living area, and there in the living area is a sewing cabinet that I have just sold that is going to be picked up the next day. And the thought I had was, you know what? I'm just going to go over there and open up the, cut, the door and see if there's any leftover re cotton reels or bobbins left in the sewing cabinet. I better retrieve those before it leaves tomorrow. So I open up the door and three rows down in a plastic, you know, they're, they're like little cubby holes that you can fold in and out. Three rows down, I went, what, what is that? There's something in that plastic drawer. And I pulled it out and, and you know, there's my good jewellery. I had zero recollection of ever putting it there, except that I had been creative and I put it somewhere <laughs> new. Now, I don't even, my husband says, Robin, don't even think about what would have happened if the people had come the next day to pick up the cabinet. You don't have to go there because spirit didn't let you go there. Thank God. God, hallelujah. This is my husband, right? Because he doesn't want me in this state. And I'm like, whoa. I mean, it's a simple secular example, but that's how powerful it is when we go into the quiet, when we let go and let God. I have a whole new experience of that. Wow. Okay. I could tell that story. Okay. Good. So... What happens when we reach for the quiet? One other thing you can do, I like to ask spirit questions, but you can also re-establish your mental equivalent. Remember? Our vision. So if life and the facts of life are not the way you want them to be, when you go into the quiet, you, you create your mental equivalent. You visualize how you want it to be. And spirit goes, okay, thanks. I got something better to work with now. All right, I got it. And 
it gets busy creating the reality, the new cause, the new vision, the new equivalent that you want to create. I was reading a book by George Bendel. Um, Dr. George Bendel was a minister in our movement and he lived with Ernest Holmes for the last two years of Ernest Holmes' life. And he wrote a book called, gosh, why do I have trouble remembering his book? It's now time, something like that. The time is now, it's now time. And in it, he has this wonderful visual that really, really resonated with me. He said, and when you get your mental equivalent, you have to then think about it and visualize it with joyful expectancy. I went, ooh, joyful expectancy, not just expectancy. So the image that he created in my mind and reminded me of, remember when we were kids, the day before Christmas, the night before Christmas, or the day before, the night before our birthday, did we have any doubt whatsoever that the very next day something good was going to happen? We were going to get a gift. Did we ever doubt it? Not once. We went to bed with joyful expectancy that something was going to happen the next day and somebody was going to give me a gift. That's the feeling that we have to reconnect to when we create our mental equivalence now, is joyful expectancy. And I got in touch with that little girl, that seven and eight year old, and how I used to jump into bed and, and I'd, I'd sneak out from out the covers and, I'd, and my mother would go, you better go to sleep because if you don't go to sleep, Santa's not going to come. Okay, okay. But I was so filled with joyful expectancy. It was hard to, did anybody have that experience? Hard to go to sleep, wasn't it? So it's like remembering what that feeling was like when we create our mental equivalents. So what happens when we reach for some quiet time and, a new, and our mental equivalent? What happens if that doesn't work? Has that ever happened to you? Okay, the to-do list is too long, the, the upset is you've got too much stuff going on, that even when you give yourself quiet time and what have you, it doesn't kind of work. That's when you reach for a minister, a practitioner, a class, an Ernest Holmes book. You reach for that which is all of the immense array of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, spiritual people who can hold a consciousness for us so that until we can get that connection between us and spirit back in. That's what I love about this philosophy. Lots of people are going to centres and churches today, this morning, Sunday morning, but you know why I'm glad I'm here and that you are here with me? Is because of how much we have in the form of books, resources, classes, people, prayer practitioners. We have so much. We have such a deep tradition and history of providing people with the help they need when they themselves can't find it within themselves. We know it's there, don't we? We all know it's in there, but sometimes we just can't access it for all sorts of reasons. And it could be that it was something that goes way back, some pain, some hurt from a childhood wound, and we just can't get to that spiritual wisdom on how to heal it correctly. So we reach out to somebody else. So, don't let the facts of life block the force of life. Reach. Take that T out of react, turn it on its side, put an extra little slash mark there and make it the word reach. And on the physical plane, reach for some darkness. It's called destimulation. Remember the float tanks of the 70s and 80s? They put you in a tank and you lay there and they closed the door and it was pitch black. That's what we need. We need to take and disconnect from this, from each other, from the daylight, from everything that stimulates us constantly into this whirling dervishes that we all seem to have become. And if you're not a whirling dervish, you know a bunch of people who are and they make you tired just looking at them. <laughs> Our kids. All day long. Ah, anyway. So reach for the darkness, because when you are in the darkness of the physical plane, 
and let go of the emotion and the, thought, the negative thinking, guess what happens? The light gets turned on. And where does the light get turned on? When we de-stimulate from the physical universe, where does the light get turned on? In here, it gets turned on in our heart and in our mind, and it gets turned on to all of the spiritual wisdom. And when you have access, free access to spiritual wisdom, the word joy will be absolutely your daily, minute by minute, second by second experience. Because you're in the flow of spiritual wisdom. Mm. There you go. I just want to say thank you to this beautiful woman. Oh. Oh. <laughs> because uh, she is one of my nearest and dearest people. And as much as I, um, at Sydney CSL, we start on July the 8th, uh, please check out our website and like it at sydneycsl.com.au. We have donate buttons in both US and Australian dollars. <laughs> and I'm just gonna watch this woman blossom and, and grow and she's gonna be my inspiration as I'm sure I will be hers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Wasn't R Reverend Robin amazing? Amazing. I know. I'm so grateful, so grateful. So now it's that time of the service where we get to participate in the spiritual practice of showing our abundance and our gratitude for this beautiful community and taking an offering, a gift, a monetary gift, a gift of consciousness, a gift of thought, and holding it in our hands, holding it close to our heart. <laughs> Not tripping. <laughs> yes. I just want to invite us to really be conscious of, of the gifts that we give to this community. Because we give to this community because we are given to, because we're filled. But also know that it's a gift of love. It's a gift of consciousness. Even money is consciousness. And every bit of it, it raises us up. It raises us up together. It is a higher vibration. And so I invite you to take what you have. Hold it close to your heart and say with me, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am prosperous. Thank you, God. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. grateful practitioner here and I'm here to let you know that if you need prayer today there's practitioners ministers here that are w more than willing to pray with you they'll be lined up at the wall after service and if you'd like to write out your prayer there's a box and prayer requests on the other side of this wall over here and uh, practitioners will pray for you all week long you can have it sent to your email or by phone I'd like to ask all the ministers and practitioners now to stand and pray with me. <sighs> Knowing the divine love fills this room and every person in it, I am so grateful for this day, this service, and all the souls that have partook in it. I know as we go from here, we will be filled with grace for the whole week. And I know I hold the truth for each and every individual person that is here. For together we say, and so it is. So it is. Let's bring on in the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember how to sing this, you guys? Let's sing yes. it to them. Okay. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, the little one stop to suck his thumb, and they all go marching down into the ground to get out of the rain. Bum, bum, bum. Can the I ants say come. I thought it was the month, the um, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory song. Why did I think that? <laughs> Oompa Loompas. Oh, no. But we anyway. can do that next week, Nicole. 
<laughs> that didn't go as planned, but that's the end song. Or, am I on? I don't know. Are you on? <laughs> Can you hear me? The end song's kind of appropriate. Wow, <laughs> look at how many there are. We have a big group Woo! today. Our theme this month is living joyfully, and today we talked about faith and what faith means to us, and we kind of likened it to having a flashlight in a dark tunnel, and even though we don't know really what's at the end of the tunnel, the flashlight helps light every step of the way, so we know that we're always supported and, and safe. And then we transitioned into talking about changes and how scary changes can be and how faith can help us with that also. And when we change schools and we don't know anybody or, um, you know, a new neighborhood. And that when we know that we are good friends and that we're amazing and that we have something to offer that we will meet friends. We all talked about, every one of us has been in that situation and even though we were so scared the first day, it always turned out that it, it was good and the change was good. But we also talked about that we can decide what that experience is going to be. We can decide that it's going to be scary and we can also decide that it's going to be okay and that we know that. And so we made we made some, um, you guys want to hold up your plates? We made some plates with some things that are important to us, either things that we feel or things that we like. And then we pointed arrows and we each went around and said, I choose something. So I've got a couple people that okay. want to um, share with that. Hold your hand if you're going to say, you get to, to share one thing that you choose. Ariel. I choose making maps. Making maps. She's a map maker. Ooh. I choose playing soccer. Thank you. Fortnite. Oh, yeah. I choose eating sushi. Oh. Fortnite. Say, I choose. I choose baseball. I choose football. Perfect. Basketball. Yay! I also just have one quick announcement that um, our camp fundraiser is going to start next weekend or next Sunday and we will be selling, do we have anybody in one? I guess I've, we're going to be selling amazing t-shirts, t-shirts and, and hats and, and totes and we'll be back in the corner and that's to help send our teens to camp. That's all? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can, can we part ways for a moment? Everybody scoot for just a second. Alan? We heard that it was your birthday, and your beloved wife has, has given these flowers to you for your birthday. So, Alan always, Alan does our flower arrangements, and so he did them this week, but he didn't know that they were for him. <laughs> so. I invite you all to stand and take a hand. And repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It's this thing called life. It's this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in all that I do. I give thanks for it. I give thanks for it. And I accept it. And I accept it. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. And just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Yes, there is peace on earth. And yes, it begins with me. with me. 